Hello everyone. My name is Gautam Jaisuria. I'm a student of Tata Institute of Social Sciences, HR, HRM and LR second year. I'm here to talk about my internship, summer internship experience, um, uh, which went went about which went about for two two months from uh, uh, April May months, and um, it has been a, such an interesting experience. I thought I'll share with you. And huge thanks uh, to Inside IM for giving me the opportunity to share my experience. Um, to start off with, uh, I'll just give you a brief about myself. Um, I I hail from the state of Kerala. I did my schooling in Kerala. I got an opportunity to go to Japan and do my plus one plus two there. I got a scholarship there and then uh, study Japanese. Uh, came back to India, wrote a common law entrance test and. Um, got into Punjab, uh, National Law University, Punjab, spent five years there, uh, graduated in 2013, after which um, I thought that I could give a shot in civil services. So uh, went to went about preparing for civil services for about two years full time, after which I realized that, you know, I, I had enough of uh, spending time studying. So I thought of exploring other areas. So one of the things that interested me was uh, taking up a rural development fellowship. Uh, it's in the name of SBI Youth for India's Fellowship. So it gives the opportunity for uh, youngsters of this country uh, to, say, spend one year in a rural area, implement uh, a project which is completely conceptualized by them, and, uh, you know, end to end, you do the project and come out after one year. So I did that. I did my project in uh, Namakil district of Tamil Nadu. I spent one year there, came out. And uh, then after I realized, I. I could try my hand at public policy because the role development the experience gave me a micro micro vision, and uh, what I'm looking for was next was uh, my macro level vision of how things worked in in the area of development. So I went up went took up a stint in uh, public policy in student uh, in Trivandrum, Kerala. It's called Institute for Sustainable Development and Governance. They primarily worked in the area of uh, Panchayati Raj um, uh, expenditure tracking, budgetary analysis, and uh, you know. Uh, development work, development related uh, analysis work. So it was a huge experience for me during which I realized I I, conduct, I had I, I had involved in a few training programs for Panchayati level executives. So I realized that there is a trainer in me uh, which I could develop. So I was looking for opportunity, I was looking for, for educational opportunities which I can develop the trainer in me. I realized that this HR and LR offered me a great platform, uh, you know, that so I started preparing for CAT as well as TIS. So I wrote CAT. I got uh, I got into Irma as well as uh, I got I got admission to Irma and TIS. So uh, TIS I chose TIS because TIS offered me a very niche uh, expertise in the area of HR, whereas TIS Irma was more uh, you know more general generalistic in nature. So I I opted for TIS. One of the other reason uh, major reasons why I opted for TIS was because of the ROI factor. You spend about uh, two lakhs something, and you know get an average placement of nineteen lakhs, which is pretty good in in my opinion. So um, in summary, this is my journey uh, till TIS. Um, and after getting into TIS, I, I didn't, I, as, like I said, I did not, I, I had no dream of getting into a corporate, having a corporate career or get into a company, uh, you know, corporate company. So I did not know much about any of the companies that existed there or what they offered or, you know, what kind of experience one would have. So I completely open to any company as far as summer placements are concerned. So, but, uh, as a lawyer, I'd, I had a distinct advantage of uh, knowing about law and, uh, you know, having a little bit of experience from this because I prepared for services, having a little bit of experience and knowledge about uh, the news in general, having an attitude, having having a knowledge about things in general. That kind of helped me in my preparations towards summer internship. It, it helped me to reduce the associated barriers. Normally, we have a tunnel vision when you enter, uh, you know, an M a MBA education, there is a tendency to have a a tunnel vision but in my case it was not the case because i had few diverse experience which helped me to lower that associative barrier uh, and as far as this is concerned it's not really a business school in the traditional sense of it because you have multiple social sciences streams uh, spread across 42 courses so that helped me to this interaction helped me to refine my uh, aptitude towards things you know you have a very refined politically correct vision towards things that also helped me in my preparations um, so uh, the other thing is that faculty is very research oriented to help me to so there is always an emphasis on whatever you say you have to back it up with research so that also set me uh, set me and my uh, my classmates in the right path 
the other uh, aspect of being in test is that you have a field work component which prepares you really well for an internship because other when you look at other b schools you know probably summer internship program is the only program where you have an external interaction as an industry interaction but this you have one uh, one field field work or internship every semester so this is uh, some sort of uh, uh, study and uh, and work kind of ongoing kind of a process where you work for two days in a week uh, and then the rest of the days in spend in the classroom so you like work like work while you study sort of a program so i spend my first internship in a company called vvf it's a b2b company which supplies oleo chemicals to all the uh, manufacturing majors my second internship was in colgate uh, colgate 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 india uh, their shared services department in hr so these uh, experience, exp experiences gave me a lot of uh, uh, you know insights into how a com how a hr department in a, in a professional company works and that really helped uh, in my preparations um uh when 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 it came to my the subjects i liked in this i would say labor law compensation organizational behavior and business strategy are my favorite subjects because i believe that this as an institution uh, when it comes to hr has these are the subjects that they have strong hold on and that really helped me i mean taking up the subjects and being uh, you know being giving a lot of focus in these subjects helped me a lot uh so this is basically uh, the the journey uh, before it is and in this that i've that i've experienced this so how i wish to go about uh, in this this uh, uh, you know video cast or webinar is that first i'll tell talk about uh, the company that i've uh, interned in uh, preparation for the internship how the selection process what went after getting selected and you know uh, the fact that this webinar link would be available to you of uh, as as soon as this is over and also the transcript will be made in ebook and shared with you so do watch out for that um, so moving on to the so let's start with the company here uh, i i got an opportunity to intern in hindustan unilever in in their uh, bombay office in andheri uh, i would i must say um, that uh, uh, that it was an interesting experience um and before going getting into that i'll i'll first explain um, by the interview process because since questions are asked on the interview uh, for people not to know more about interview questions i'll focus on that i'll come to that in a bit uh, so why did i before that i'll take up why did i apply for the company i apply for the company because like i said i did not have any much of a background when it comes to knowledge about corporate uh, dealings you know corporate affairs or anything so i first criteria was to do i get an opportunity to learn and i spoke to a couple of my seniors and they told me hul is the best place for you to learn because you are not pushed for doing things you are you know they are give you an a platform to learn so there is a lot of opportunities to learn they encourage learning they encourage going out of the project they encourage to ask the right questions so Uh, it is it is more of an evolved organization than many other i would say so that helped me a lot so that is one of the reasons i kind of chose to apply for actual was in one of my you know first you know top 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 uh, priority companies uh, the other area is a sustainable living plan that uh, that actual follow so they have a sustainable uh, you know environment approach for every plan they make every business plan they make they are always sustainability and uh, component that's one of the things that attracted me coming from a development studies background uh the other the other part of actual which i really liked is the organization culture which is completely employee uh, focused employee centric where you know uh, which is evidenced which one of one of the uh, tes testimonials to this fact is that uh, they have very flexi uh, timings and they they don't really have a fixed number of uh, holidays for for employees and they completely put the onus on employees to do their work and you know uh, that's that's how the things work in actual so i was completely blown away that and i was i was kind of given a little bit of uh, uh, you know uh, i was given as given a, a brief introduction about this by my seniors so it helped me in uh, a bit in um, choosing the right company so now moving on to what kind of preparation i did before the internship for gd sellers interview so how it happened is that we had uh, one gd uh, in the first round second round is one interview and third round is an interview again so one gd round and two interview rounds so for these i would i would divide my preparation into short term and long term i'll first start with short term uh, short term in, in, as far as short term preparations are concerned i first focused on the academic part academic part i mostly focused on uh, labor law and organizational behavior uh, because there was a tendency I, I, as we as was told by my I seniors as well there's a tendency to ask the student as to which area he is comfortable in and then focus their questions on the base of that so 
I um, I focused on uh, uh, organizational behavior and labor law. Mostly questions were surrounding, uh, you know, there were two kinds of questions. One was about what are the, you know, explain to me the theories of a certain topic, for example, leadership or motivation. We were supposed to give, you know, names of the theories and a brief description of what we learned. And the other, uh, the other kind of question would be, you know, this is a situation. How would you respond to it? Can you apply any theory onto the situation? So these are the couple, few kinds of questions that came used to come up. So I kind of mentally prepared for that, you know, jot on all the topics that can probably come and then uh, went about and uh, read. So for OB, I referred Robin's, Robin's book. And for labor law, Padi and, uh, you know, a few uh, online, online materials, which were shared by my seniors. This is the academic academic part I prepared for. The second part is the behavioral part. Behavioral part is focused on with the kind of profile that you make, uh, which is uh, which is done through CV. So they look up your CV and they ask questions on the basis of that. So what I did was I created an Excel sheet where on 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 one column I prepared the experience that I've gone through, be it uh, generic life experience, the achievements, uh, the professional life ex uh, professional experience, the ach achievements in, from your uh, work life. All that I listed it down, and then I kind of in the next column I kind of mapped my learnings from it. So, so for example, if it's say I went to I went into the rural development fellowship, and so the experience I gained on is that I I realized that uh, you know community mobilization is very important to create an impact in a rural area. Well, that is a learning. That's a professional learning, and probably a personal learning would be that you know uh, I I realized that there is a lot of managerial concept that you can learn. Uh, you know from yourself as you go about doing a project so it's all inside you you just have to find out and name it so that's one of the learnings personal learnings that i had from this say from my work experience. so that's similar a similar exercise was done for every uh, life experience that i had it really helped me uh you know filling up my application forms as well as uh, giving and giving quality answers during my interview the third part of my short-term preparation was industry related questions so uh, it just you know this is nothing new, but I went about uh, researching about uh, secondary doing a secondary research of the company's products, their various functions, uh, you know, which is which was available in public domain. The other thing I, I did was uh, going about reading going about reading the the trends. For example, if you are applying for HR HR if, for an HR position, then um, it, I would recommend you to go through Deloitte's or uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers or any of the consulting companies trends analysis there are they release annual trends uh, report which is which is quite useful because then it makes your they know that the um, employers would know that uh, you are on you're on track with the latest trends in that function uh, which is one thing that you can do uh, the other thing is i read about uh, the culture of the companies and the ongo the generic news of 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 the sec of the industry and the company from people's matters and hr kata and all those websites which give me hr related news and also, as you know, the prior internship experience for my senior batch, alumni, and you know, inside IAM, the the archives from in, inside IAM and all that, it really helped in preparing the short term in, in, in you know in, in a short term uh, range. As far as long term is concerned, I would suggest you to go through. Uh, I I kind of uh, you know refer to a lot of apps. I'm a very techn technologically driven person, so I uh, you know relied on a lot of apps to uh, you know improve my efficiency uh, when it comes to learning. One is Quora. The other is Blinglist. Uh, Blinglist is a website gives you a summary uh, of um, the management and uh, nonfiction books in in ten slides. So it helped me to like kept on uh, adding on to my knowledge base. Civils Daily is a day uh, is an app I used to do during my civil service preparation. So it condenses editorial materials into one slide. So it helped me to keep a track of uh, the news daily news and have an opinion about it. The other one is the HBR article and the podcast. Uh, so HBR articles come on uh, almost any uh, almost all the functions of business mm -hmm. i usually read on hr mostly and uh, my faculty members and uh, my uh, friends also used to help me by sharing quality articles the other one you used to listen is our hbr podcast so hbr podcast can be subscribed through itunes or any of the podcasting apps you just have to type hbr and you will find uh, you know quality interviews of uh, business leaders and their perspectives on latest issues which really helped me one of the one of the things that my friends used to do, which I did not do, was to do uh, a course in Coursera, uh, which in which can be on uh, analytics, Excel, or PowerPoint, which can really be useful during as you enter the uh, you know as you enter the internship. The other thing that they re, uh, did during as as a long term preparation strategy would was to involve in as many uh, business business competitions as possible uh, to to dare to compete. So there to compete has used to have a lot of competition at that point of time. So I applied over 35 competitions in the span of six months. 
so which really prep me for that high high intensity uh, work that i was about to do or the high intensity process that was the uh, that was interview and gds which really pushed your uh, you know physical and mental limits so that i re- that you know 35 combination over a span of 6 months really helped me in doing that the other thing i personally do was to go through a physical endurance training uh, through football and you know 3 th- 4 kilometers running at least 3 times a week which helped me to build capacity to withstand that 3 uh, 3 days long process of uh, of uh, you know internship selection uh, so that so being physically fit i would recommend you to do that uh, because it helps you to manage your stress and create endurance so i that is something very important as you go because you one is like one is likely to have a lot of setbacks during the interview process some companies might reject you so it, i think being involved in a sporting activity which help you which will help you to build the endurance um the other thing that i used to do is to create uh, class notes using evernote app evernote is an app which you can use through in your uh, laptop as well as your phone so i used to make online notes so that i can retrieve it anytime possible no matter where i am instead of creating an offline note which you have to carry everywhere you know you might forget to carry that note or you know notes might get destroyed or you can't really search for a particular topic from a note which in evernote you can and i also created flashcards mobile flashcards using an app called quizlet so for example if you if you have a certain topic on motivation motivation theory room rooms motivation theory so i can create a small flashcard in which i on a click of a button i can see the theory's name on the other side of the flashcard i can see uh, the explanation of the theory so it's completely digital so all you have to do is to enter the data in uh, quizlet and you can you can use a flashcard to remember and uh, recall the information that you've learned so um like i said actual selection process was comprising of two three rounds uh, one gd and two rounds of interview first interview was primarily testing my academic knowledge and second being a behavioral interview they had two panelists uh, and they were very friendly uh, so um, i think a majority of the questions in the last round was mostly on behavior like what i did and how i did it and what are the learnings from it and you know few situational questions so uh, i would not give you i mean there is nothing much you can do other than um, being thorough with your profile being reflective about your profile rather than just by hearting what you have done uh, find a larger meaning greater meaning to what you have done you know link it up to some of the learnings from a classroom if possible some of the things some of the things i have done you know but and also create a very uh, you know very jovial mood not not create very serious about it because hl is a company which uh, look for to people who are very pleasant you know very very jovial pleasant uh, can you some i would even to come to some extent uh, say that you can you should be a you should think of yourself as an entertainer you know are you are you able to hold their attention entertain them are you a good storyteller or something that i think they would look forward to in a person and i would uh, what i would say in as a key to cracking the group discussions would be that you know you have to stay classy you know majority of the people focus on uh, having a lot of air time right getting a lot of air time in the gds you know making putting their points across without considering what others are going to say are, am i going to am i sounding repetitive or am i am i just telling the very generic points and not creating anything new so these are things you should be very careful about stay classy do not interrupt people when they're speaking uh, do not introduce generic points because people are evaluating would already know those points do not re- repeat points do not paraphrase points but draw analogies analogy is something that you can always do if you know something that is very similar in some other say some other uh, you know per, you know in a, some other some other reference you can always bring in that and i think people the appreciation in my case has been hugely successful so you can the other thing i used to meticulously do is when other people used to speak i used to take down notes i used to you know add a point and next to it i used to add the name of the person who raised the point which helped me in my gds because then you were giving an impression that you were really involved in the gd rather than just making you know just making your point and then shutting yourself down that's not ideally a person some uh, an evaluator would look forward in a, in a person so noting down some to summarize to excel in gds be polite be classy noting note down the points what others are speaking try to link the others points with your point be short and crisp do not take more than 30 to 1 30 seconds to 45 seconds that's a maximum you should be ideally be taking at one go have a try to have a short crisp and uh, you know on air time rather than having a long 1 minute 2 minute ka uh, you know sessions so which will short these short sessions would create a greater impact in on the group as well as on the way, uh, also on the evaluator rather than having a longer a uh, kind of a speech kind of a session so th- that's something that i would uh, give you as a tip and with respect to cracking the interview um what i would say is instead of focusing on a lot of subjects focus on one or two subjects which you are really confident of 
go deep deep into it try to read a lot of case studies so that you can recall those case studies and substantiate your answers you know even if it's a situational case you know you might come across a similar case which i've read so create an excel sheet you know i uh, add uh, you know these case studies or names of the case studies which you can easily recall and keep revising it i don't think it help uh, you know preparing for the for the situational questions that have come up within the first round of interview second round of interview uh, practice giving short answers do not go for lengthy answers it will bore the evaluator if bore the interviewer so try to be as engaging as possible ask yourself whether you would like your own answer write it down try to practice keep it crisp do multiple readings of your cv pick three or four major events to be highlighted when when that you know when the stereotype question of uh, tell me about yourself is asked to you get that three four major events uh, you know narrated in the form of a story make it entertaining is something that i would recommend to you um in short i think hl looks for candidates who are reflective not just narrative just reflective adaptive so you have to tell them how you've adapted across various situations have you come up have you encountered challenges in your life how have you overcome those challenges how have you adapted to that and, and do you have an aptitude to learn have you displayed that curiosity to learn in your career because hl is a it's a company that operates in fmcg space and what is fmcg fmcg is a dynamic space where th keep things keeps changing be it sales be it uh, logistics be it uh, you know marketing things keep changing so you have to be you have to have a sense of empathy in you because you have to know what consumer wants and you have to also know have to be reflective about what you've been doing so far are you doing the right path yeah, that is a quality that you develop if you're reflective and you also have to be adaptive because like i said the key, the dynamics of the market keep changing i think essentially they are reflecting they are trying to find the new are you somebody who can fit into the you know into the company with respect to their market the core market okay then after getting selected uh, what i did okay yes so after getting selected uh, what i did was uh, regu regu regularly so there was a gap of about 6 months of first as you know first semester is the time when you get selected you have about 6 months to prepare for the in actual uh, internship I regularly regularly follow up the news, speak to seniors about the uh, how actually I was I was focused more on the process part of the internship rather than how internship actually was because internship experience can differ from person to person because I may not react to a particular event in the same way that my senior did. So I did not focus much on the experience part, but I try to gather as much details on the process part. How uh, one uh, they went about researching a certain problem, business problem, how they linked up their findings and all. so that's the area where i focused on one thing my friends used to do but i did not do much about it. i just did a quick cursory cursory glance of it is to read the annual report the annual report of the company gives you a lot of info about how what is the kind of uh, you know market uh, situation what is the market situation they're facing uh, what is the growth strategy they are adopting what are the uh, latest developments they focused on all these would give you a great deal of the re annual report will give you a great detail of all these on all these uh, you know topics and uh, one thing you can also do is to go through find out a list of companies whom probably can benchmark so that'll uh, you know help you in some way to because benchmarking is something that you would obviously do at some point so knowing about these companies probably help find to create a create a database of people who can contact from these you know the competent companies um, would help uh, because it will help you to save a lot of time so this is uh, something that i did prior to joining and after joining what i did is as far as hl is concerned what they're looking for in in, a, in an intern is to have a quick and impactful uh, you know uh, research or an internship in 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 general so their focus is completely on are you quick enough are you impactful enough so they're not looking for somebody who is a academic researcher but they're not looking also not looking for a quick fix quick fix guy yes they need to have balance between you know not going too deep in a subject or not too superficial about it if you have the right balance try to focus on the, one of the important things is as a time because time flies with a lot of other activities would also keep you occupied you know there are a lot of employer branding fun activities which would keep you which you keep you occupied during the actual internship we had about 3 days uh, employer branding uh, the induction session which was really fun we had a lot of games you know interlaced between functional orientation some serious sessions and some fun games so really nice hats off to actual for that uh so i what i would suggest you is to um, you know have a, that sort of an orientation where you have to move quick you don't have much time so i would not recommend you to spend more than 10 days for initial research 
as soon as the initial research is done try to focus on when i can when i can when can i find to the bot when can i when can i get on the bottom of the issue come with a viable solution implement it so implementation should be a key focused of which key focus of your internship so it should ideally start somewhere between fifth or sixth uh, week of the internship that implementation exercise and the other thing that i should would recommend you to focus is the visibility part no matter how good you do how good an internship that uh, you you deliver it is important for you uh, from a ppo perspective for everyone who, uh, who for everyone around you to know about what you're doing so one of the ways to do about it is to get your projects vetted by the senior leadership so identify people who matters in the company go to them show them what you're doing try to discuss your solutions with them see if you're on the right track and ask them for recommendations so with each recommendations you're essentially getting the viewpoint of that person and also a, a tacit tacit consent of that person so in a way you're you're getting some acceptance from the senior leadership so next time in your project uh, tutor or mentor takes up the intern takes up your findings to the uh, to the senior leadership they are not completely alien to what you're saying so that's something that you can do and also take inputs from other mentors so as i understand uh, when the when the final call is taken there will be a group of people sitting together discussing each each of intern's profile and you know find tell probably discussing okay this person is good but this person is slightly better so idea is you know you have to have a uh, regular interaction with not just your mentor but other uh, intern's mentors as well so that's something that i would give you as a suggestion um, the other thing is to have a being participative in the other initiatives uh, the employee branding team would would engage in a lot of initiatives so be participative about that uh, because it well, number one it give it it creates a lot of good vibes in the industry you make a lot of friends because you never know how uh, you know how how are they how they going to aid you in uh, creating a good good deliverable uh, project deliverable or you know if you want any help from other functions they are probably help going to help you out so you know uh, other than that the, if you you create strong bonds you know which you can which uh, which help you uh, you know even outside the internship as well so the last point that i would tell you is to go beyond the project so hul is a company which uh, expects a lot from its interns so you should not be restricted your you should not restrict your, yourself to just the project but go try to go beyond the scope of the project understand the organization issues understand the priority of the organization find where you can add value i did i kind of uh, focused on an issue which was outside my project uh, my project i forgot to tell you my project my project was on um, organization culture and structure so i was um, uh, interested to find uh, what are the loopholes uh, when it comes to organization structure and culture of hul finance and uh, i went about did a focus group discussion did a couple of interview with the senior leadership and came about finding a solution and uh, i could not implement it so which is why i am again telling you implementation is a very key thing i could not do it had i if i get a chance to do it once all over again i would really focus myself on the implementation part instead of just i i did a lot of uh, i spent a lot of time of researching about the problem and you know confirming and validating the solution that i came up with so i didn't think that was not i didn't think it was necessary to spend that much time i could have cut short on the time and focus more on the implementation part we eventually suggestion one of the solutions so i could have implemented was a training program which you know in the hindsight i should have done it but you know all is all is well that ends well um so like i said going beyond the process is very important so uh, two words about the hl culture hl culture is very employee friendly uh, in the sense like i already mentioned it has flexi timing so even for an intern you don't have to worry about you know you have to report on this time you know to leave on this time is completely up to you where whenever uh, the work ends you can leave or you know you can stay back till whatever time you want nobody is going to judge you on that no restrictions on the number of leaves that applies for employees not for interns interns are expected to show up every day no restrictions because uh, it's more work driven not a person driven process so if your work is done it doesn't matter whether you are in the office or outside the office so that's a kind of culture that uh, that uh, hl has and i'm really uh, i myself associate a lot with that culture and the rewards is above the industry and well pay, the company pays people its people really well uh, it they it values their work and the other thing the really good thing about hl is that it rotates the role of an employee every 2 years which means you are not bored uh, of your job uh, because you are you have a new role coming in every 2 years and you also have an option to shift the functions if you if you show the right kind of uh, you know app potential so for example if you have the marketing potential in you and you are an hr no one is stopping you from uh, shifting to marketing provided that you you know you prove yourself and that's something that other not many companies would offer to you 
and uh, learning opportunities hul is one of the companies is high on learning and development so it offers online and offline uh, learning opportunities of plenty of resources out there you know because it's a global organization all the global uh, uh, you know uh, learning um, experiences are brought into a common platform it's a great experience because you can learn about what is happening in hul brazil hul uk uh, sorry U, uh, unilever brazil unilever uk and you know you get to learn what they're doing and it's a great exposure that way and the freedom of freedom to experiment so they give you complete freedom to do whatever you feel you know they always one thing that my men, uh, my tutor asked me to do is to go out of the box and to find an out of box solution you don't want any conservative uh, traditional uh, you know solutions so something they encourage uh, individual innovations individual entrepreneurship a lot and uh, as far as the intensity of the work is concerned i would admit that it's a very uh, sort of a very high intensity uh, space to work on uh very people are very uh, work driven um so there will be phases where intensive work uh, happens and uh, it is that you will have to uh, rise up to the occasion and uh, face those challenges i'm so there will be it, it won't be like you know you have 24/7 work it will be like you know in a month probably there will be a week or a, or a 10 days which are very highly intensive and you know rest of the days would be you know average or moderate so that's a kind of work that you can find in hul so it's a great experience um so this is in summary uh, what i have um, but I, i see a lot of questions coming in so i'll answer questions one by one uh let's just let me just open up the question sheet uh yes uh what kind of interview questions i uh, were you asked by uh, sariska nirukar thank you sariska for the question um my uh, question that were asked where was so first would be uh, tell me about yourself um i narrated it in a whole so, so you don't have to start from the you know very beginning you just have to start from the major events you can you don't have to focus chronologically you can i went about thematically as well you know there was a phase when i started you know uh, uh, there was i divided my uh, progress from in a thematic area like i was adaptive so adaptation would be one theme uh, uh i explorative i i was there was a phase in my career where i was trying to do a lot of things there was i kind of tagged it as an explorative part of my uh, my uh, my career so it can be thematic or it can be chronologic so that's one thing that i would do to uh, to a question what you're doing uh, sorry uh, tell me about yourself so the other question that you were asked is uh, you know suppose uh, you encounter a certain situation where you require you are required to give training now what is the methodology you would use to give the training so you would have to start from the say uh, from the selection of the participants to the methodology you would give to the objective of the training to the uh, assessment of the training results so essentially you will have to apply the theory that you've learned on training and development to a situation so the idea is to keep uh, a to, to 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 have a good knowledge about the subjects that possibly going to be asked uh, which should be which i would say uh, which which you would already know by the time that you enter the interview you would have a list of topics that you would have to prepare of uh in my case it was ob labor law training and development because i had done a project on training and development in my field work so that was a question that was because it was given in the cv they were it was quite obvious they would ask it yeah so these are the few questions they were asked asked to me and uh, the second question is from vineet singh vineet singh says how much of the interview focused on sales compared to marketing did the interview involve case studies uh, is relevant marketing experience required in your resume so uh, vineet sorry to disappoint you i am not from marketing uh, background i'm not doing a marketing uh, course i'm doing an hr course uh, in tata institute of social sciences so uh, mm, so sales and marketing not figure figure in my uh, interview at all um maybe if you uh, if you uh, give me a message i can uh, help you get in touch with people you, who have done marketing and sales and marketing uh, internship in hul i can help you with that uh the third question is is someone confused between journalist mp and specialized mb and hr how would you guide them okay um so this uh, i would say um is law depends on your personality because what is your what are your key key strength is one of the questions that you have to address my key strength was uh, is i i tend to believe that i have a lot of uh, uh, i am I, i have a lot of patience i have a lot of empathy in me uh, uh, so that helps me to uh, listen to people's problems and you know try to connect them emotionally on an emotional level and that is a be- as far as a behavioral behavioral uh, perspective is concerned that's one of the things that helped me in choosing the uh, stream of hr rather than sales and marketing um uh, and the other thing is i am uh, i would say my core strength lies in um, 
qualitative and uh, qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis so sales and marketing and finance would require a lot of quantitative analysis which uh, is not one of my comp uh, comp competitive advantages so that is one of the reasons i selected hr and this i selected because the roi is far far better than any other than any other uh, you know business uh, business institution so i think that's one of the reasons why i chose hr over generalist mba the next question is by tushar rathod um, how do i build my profile for hul what is what does hul look for candidates and how do they shortlist cvs now shortlisting cvs is uh, even i don't know how they are how they are doing they when they when i casually ask them about uh, how they doing it they, they mentioned that there is some algorithm they they using probably a mix of academic as well as behavioral algorithm uh, i don't know i'm not too sure about it but um, how to build a profile um i think the diversity is the key diversity um, they would look they they prefer a, people with a lot of diversity uh, i think uh, once you even even off you get into um, a business school you have a lot of opportunities to engage in various activities for example there are uh, colleges with the social circles because unilever is unilever is high on uh, sustainability and social service uh, so involving yourself in a social activity and creating an impact in a social activity they it's it's something it's a pattern that keeps re repeating i have seen people who got selected who have some connection with the who have some sort of a social aptitude good uh, so social connection or a social aptitude uh, so try to involve yourself in any of those social activities that that happens in your college um uh, so it makes for a good story and uh, that's one point i like to add the second point is try to have a variety of experience uh, which can be through case studies so that um through case study competitions and the case studies are discussed in the class so that uh, in the gds you you bring other uh, variety you rather than bringing generic points you have a lot more analogies and stories to tell so uh, that's something i would recommend uh, so do a lot of case studies a lot of case study competitions uh, even if it's even if it's not a flagship one go for it even if it doesn't even if you have a slim chance of winning if it's completely out of your comfort zone try to do that um for example even if even if you are from sales and marketing try to do an hr case study so i even if even even if i even if you know i was from hr but even otherwise i did uh, marketing and uh, case marketing and sales case studies so that helped me in creating a good understanding of what marketing and sales uh you know problem how do i how do i how do i solve a marketing and sales problem uh, although in a very limited context a limited sense so that's something that i would recommend to do try to challenge yourself in through competitions um rajesh asked me how much business knowledge other than hr we should have to crack such interviews so yeah so i think that's very important because uh, you have to understand the trends um uh, what's happening in the as when it comes to hul sales and uh, marketing is very important so what are the uh, so what is the kind of uh, historically what are the kind of marketing strategies that hul have adopted uh, how have the marketing strategy of the company evolved over the period of time uh, how have um, the uh, profile of people in hul evolve over time so there was i remember in my class one one of my professors explained to me that uh, in um, when you look at uh, the ceos of uh, ceos of hul you will find uh, people in uh, uh, ceos from 90, uh, 70s and 80s would be from an engineering background uh, whereas ceos um, of um, uh, 2000s and the late 90s and presently would be from a sales and marketing background so so that this it gives it gives you a paradigm shift uh, in kind in looking at in, in you know in a sense that what are the kind of talent that they're looking for so the knowledge as far as the knowledge goes i would recommend you to read up uh, for marketing as far as marketing is concerned any of the preliminary basic marketing textbooks um also sales i don't know i'm i'm not done much on sales so i, I can't comment on it so marketing can be done uh, it's very quite in, it's a quite interesting subject so um, try to learn a little bit of that uh, try to learn a little bit of how uh, hul markets its products what has been the bra branding strategy try to learn the key terms what is what, what do you mean by net promoter score you know what are the jargons that are usually used in marketing uh, what is the major uh, financial uh, ratios that are used to uh, judge the performance of the company uh, ebitda you know um, you know the revenue growth uh, all the all those uh, numbers i think understanding numbers making a business case even while you doing a project it's important to show the impact of your potential impact of your project in numbers so that uh, because that's something that uh, leadership would also want to know if you know the return of investment that they're doing so uh, rajesh my advice you to do is to number one focus on uh, learning uh, the basics of finance basic of marketing learn the terminologies that are used 
learning all the, all those metrics that could help you in making a business case the impact of your project even even if it's on hr what's the kind of financial impact it's, it's going to create uh so that uh, brings to the next question uh, by Bh uh, bhushan puranik uh, how to prepare for the interview when you don't have a prior work experience in any domain what all things we should study to enhance our expertise in the company in what companies uh, in what company is looking for okay so when you don't have a prior work ex so there are plenty of people in my class who who uh, who don't have prior work ex but yet they succeeded in getting into top companies i think the key would be to strengthen your generic understanding uh, when i say a generic understanding it can be two things one is your acad academic knowledge and one is your um, uh, knowledge about the events happening around you so academic knowledge i don't need to explain anything more it's mostly um, you know the subjects that are taught in your uh in your curriculum uh, be, for, be be thorough with that uh try to like i said try to try to revise and recall through uh, notes digital or offline notes uh flashcards um try to associate with the uh, experience in your life try to associate with the news happening around you uh for example change if you if you come across a topic like change management whether change management can be applied in a case of uh, you know vodafone idea merger because merger is some is, is an area where hr tend to uh, play a big role now well, can you apply a concept like a change management in a merger situation this is something that you can question yourself and probably prepare an answer to it which can help you in a completely uh, in a question that may not be exactly related to a merger and acquisition because you can bring that question you can you can direct that question into what you want to say so i think that is couple of things uh, you can do uh, while preparing for the interview if you don't have a work experience be strong on your academic uh and your uh, you know uh, general general understanding of the news um the other thing you can do is to do case studies uh participate in as many competitions as possible uh, data compete gives you a perfect uh, platform for, platform to do that um coursera courses would be a great coursera and other massive online course platforms would be a great validation for you guys if you have the time um what should be study to enhance your expertise in the company uh, annual report should be one um the if you if a, if a company whichever industry your company belongs try to go through the trends of the industry uh, released by the consulting companies the big four consulting um uh, price water coopers mckinsey uh, bcg any most of the companies come up with uh, functional trends as well as industry based trends it'll be like a what, 20 30 page document uh, you know you, you refer to that highlight the main points try to remember it recall it and try to fit into those answers where you think you can use it i think uh, these are the things that uh, i can recall um uh let me check if there is any more of questions uh i don't see anything more if is there anything more uh, people if there is anything more i am more than happy to answer it otherwise we can uh, we can end it here okay i think uh, there are there aren't any more questions here i i kind of touched upon most of the topics uh, so to summarize uh, um what would you help i mean there is no clear cut answer to what helps you to get a ppo i mean if somebody had cracked it already i wouldn't be speaking to you now uh, but uh, from my experience uh, from an actual perspective from from somebody who come from a, a development sector arts background who who uh, you know have had uh, gaps in its uh, in his um, you know profile who had uh, who had who were completely who were not connected to a corporate uh, kind of a role before uh, what i would do is to find what your strengths are and in my case it was building relationships try to build relationships within the company that you're working try to have healthy interactions try to always show that uh, eagerness to learn and try to get a clarity of thought by clarity of thought what i mean is to know where you're heading what is the end objective the goal is very important um and what are the what what does it you have to do to achieve that goal for example if your goal is to create to save money for your company just focus on that particular goal only i mean it's very uh, it's very it's very possible to get you know be astray from the goal 
but uh, you know it's very important for you to stay focused on that goal and this uh, deliver on that i think this is the few words i can tell you about how to get a ppo um this is it thank you so much being a great audience um, if there is anything i can help you out with feel free to reach out to my facebook profile uh, facebook profile is uh, uh, facebook in you in facebook you can search for my uh, for profile by typing g a u t a m gautam jayasurya j a y a s u r y a gautam jayasurya i am i'll be happy to um, uh, you know help you happy to help you out, uh, with uh, your quest your doubts your um, queries or your anything related to getting into this or you know getting into any of the top companies you know with whatever i know can help you connect with my friends as well thank you so much thank you so much for being a great audience um see you soon bye bye